Today we're going to talk about the R Finder B1, the Bravo 1, the new dual band, 2 meters and 440, full Android device from R Finder out of New York, and uh, it's coming up right now. Shut up and sit down. Hey guys, this is Ham Radio 2.0. My name is Jason. I'm KC5HWB. And on this channel, we do reviews, news, and how to's of everything that's new in amateur radio. If that's something that interests you, consider subscribing below. So, one of the newest things in amateur radio today is obviously the R Finder device. It is one of the first Android controlled HTs. It is a full Android device that takes dual SIM cards and is considered a world phone because it works on multiple networks. So I've done several videos about this device. I'm not going to do an intro to it today because I've already done that. You can see one of those uh, videos here and throughout the course of this video you'll see new cards pop up here from time to time and um, that'll be about previous videos I've done both that uh, interview with Bob at Orlando Hemcation of 2020 and just some other videos about the R Finder device. So today, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take you through a real quick video and show you how to manually program a repeater into the R Finder device. So what I wanna do here is set that down and I wanna switch over to the overhead camera right there. So this is what the application looks like. You can go in here. It, uh, this is the icon that it is right there. And you click on that and you see the red button at the bottom and the red button indicates that the radio is powered on. So getting notifications here. This, uh, it, it uses the GPS in the phone to find any repeaters near you. So I can click here and I can click send to, send to radio, send, uh, send to device radio is what the green button says. And then I can click that and you can see that programming info for RXTX there uh, has my radio ID underneath it, which for analog, we don't use that, but it's always displayed. The mode is FM-W, which is wide. Power is H for high, and the CTCSS is off. Now, I happen to know that this repeater, people quit texting me, this repeater carries a CTCSS tone of 110.9. So what we want to do here, and it, and it doesn't show in the R Finder app, so what we want to do here, we can do one of two things. I can manually change this by going to the drop down here and clicking on 110.9. And now it shows to be 110.9 transmit. If it had a digital PL tone, I could do it right there. If it had a receive tone, I could, I could change it right here. I should turn my Wi-Fi off when I'm doing this like that. But then after I change whatever I want to change, and also it does narrowband, uh, it does FM narrowband, FM wideband, and DMR. So for amateur radio, analog, we always use FM narrowband, most of the time anyway. So then once I make that change, I can go send a device parameters, and it updates it, and it will now allow me to key up that repeater. Now, I'm too far away from that repeater to key it up. I tried a minute ago, and it didn't work. But what I can also do Okay, so now that we've got that correct, we could, of course, key it up if we were close enough to do so. And I'll, I'll, I'm going to do a manual program here in just a second because this uh, video is about manual program. But what we can do is, since, since I know that, that information in there is incorrect, I can scroll back down to the actual and find the actual repeater, which is right, no, there it is. Right there. No, that's not it. It's right, it's this one right here. Okay, and then I can, this the N5EOC repeater on top of the Baylor Hospital in Grapevine. Okay, then I can click on Update Info, and I can change the PL tone right here to that, uh, or no, not that one, this one, 110.9. It's hard to see the camera and the screen at the same time. <laughs> right there. And uh, if I hit the back button, it closes that bottom menu. And then I can hit save. Thank you for your submission. It will be reviewed. 
So now when they go in and review those changes that I made, they will update that information. And the next time I go into the app, it will be, it will have the correct PL tone on it, CTCSS tone on it. But let's go ahead and just change one completely. I'm going to program a repeater that I can't find at all. And I'm going to go 443.875. And I just know this repeater is here because I've lived here for so long. 448.875. It's actually the same club. FM wideband, high power, transmit tone of 110.9. Send parameters. Now we're going to go like that. So that's how you manually program a repeater. You just open up, open up the app. Doesn't matter what's in here. You click there. You put in your parameters there. Low power, high power. FM wideband is what it's normally going to be. Or DMR. You can choose DMR also. If you're doing commercial, it could be FM narrowband. This is a part 90 radio, so it's authorized for commercial frequencies. Uh, your transmit and receive tone, both in analog and digital. The squelch. I've got that set there because I've been using the thing, and that's where I like to have it set. Send parameters, close, save to memory. We're going to do another video in a little bit about memory channels. And then that is it. And when we key up now. KC5 HWB testing from the uh, R-Finder B1 device. And being that that's a fusion repeater, it doesn't have a squelch tone. And... Um, a courtesy tone, rather. It doesn't have a courtesy tone. <laughs> and the, the squelch tail is just kind of like blah. So, but that is it. That's how you manually program a repeater for analog into your R-Finder device. Now, you can do the same thing for DMR. You just have to choose the talk group and the time slot. So we can go through that real quick if you want to see what that looks like. Tra change back over here to this view. And if I wanted to go here and change it to, well, no, let's go back here. Let's, let's just pick one from the device menu here. Uh, N5 EOC. All the repeaters I've displayed today are N5 EOC. Those are the closest ones to my home QTH. Click that. And if I click send a device radio, it's going to ask me about all these different uh, talk groups here. So I'm going to pick this one. Those are all the talk groups that are available in that repeater. And the way you find, the way you can update that list is to go watch this video right here that I did. Get a, If you're a repeater owner and you want to make sure your list of talk groups and time slots is accurate for the repeater in the R-Finder device, go watch this video. Log into RadioID.net with your admin account and update that list. And this is where you see the results of it. So we can go here. And now we can key up North Texas wide. And I'm not hitting it because I'm too far away. This is one reason I have a backyard repeater. Change to that view there. Okay, so if you hear that tone, if you try to key up and you hear that tone, that means you're not hitting the repeater. Okay, which it's an HT radio. Sometimes you may not hit the repeater. Um, sometimes you may have to use a hotspot. We're going to use a hotspot here in a minute also on another video also. So, but that is how you would, key, you would manually program or program from the menu. If I wanted to change something in there, I just go back to the menu, make changes to the color code or to the frequency, the same way I just did when I manually programmed the analog repeater, and that's all you need to do. Point and click programming for DMR and analog, dual band 2 meter and 440 from R Finder. Put your comments below. Let me know if you've used one of these. If you have one of the mono band versions, the H1, the M1, or the K1, <laughs> H1, M1, or K1. I carried an M1 for about a year and a half and loved it, but this is a much better unit, not only because it's dual band, but because they've made a lot of programming updates on the back end, and it's just more solid feeling, and it's got a better receive sensitivity, and the audio on it is fantastic. 73, guys, catch you next time.